such a wonderful and large family. It's just so good to see you all. Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our opening hymn this morning is from our hymns of praise, and it's number 26. <coughs>
And I couldn't help but pay attention to these words this morning. Uh, I don't know if, if you felt like I did, but there's a message in that particular hymn. It basically tells us that no matter where we are in life, no matter what our circumstances, uh, whether it's in our arrogant pride, whether it's in our fear, our failure, our sickness and our health, we can come to the Lord. And that's so comforting. How many times do we say, well, I can't go up there like this, or I can't go down there like looking like that. But we can come to the Lord just as we are. I want a wonderful message this morning. Now, we're also going to come, and we're going to celebrate birthdays. If there's a beautiful crowd this morning, there's got to be somebody celebrating a birthday during the month of February. I know. Oh, Judy, yes, that's right. You told me last week. Okay, Judy, come on up. The girls are getting the candles ready. I know she get there. Okay. Spencer, yes, Spencer is one year old. Spencer was baptized and he's growing up in this church. And we thank God for mothers like Kelly who bring their children to church. And there's a lot of them in this church. He's one year old. Can you believe? And you've got a birthday now. I'm still trying to remember your name. <coughs> Sharon's got a birthday. Anybody else? Here we come. Oh.
by his infinite goodness and mercy. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we turn over to page 96. No, I'm sorry. Page 47. The Lord is in his holy temple. Oh, come, let us worship. And I invite you to join me in the midnight and in the wrong pages. There should be page 49. Now, page 49 from the Manaite and the Jubilate. This week it was one of those when there were three bulletins to be typed. So you have to bear with me if you find mistakes. Thank you. The Manaite and the Jubilate on page 49. <coughs> Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And raise a loud shout to him the songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the patterns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His faithfulness endures from age to age. Please be seated for the proclamation of the Lord. reading is taken from the book of Leviticus, Leviticus sorry, chapter 19, verses 1 to 2 and 9 to 18. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy, because I, your Lord your God, am holy. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to every edge of your field or gather the glendings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not deceive one another. Do not swear falsely by my name and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Do not defraud your neighbor or rob him. Do not hold back the wages of a hired man overnight. <coughs> Do not curse the dead or put a stumbling block in front of the blind, but fear your God, I am the Lord. Do not pervert justice, do not show partiality to the poor 
or favoritism to the grave, but judge your neighbor fairly. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. Do not hate your brother in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly so that you will not share in his guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Keep my decrees. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our appointed psalm is Psalm 119, found on page 870 and 871. Please stand. <coughs> Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statute, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, that they that for that is my desire. My heart to your decrees, and not to my just gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you made to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments, and your righteousness preserve my life. We will do the prayer at um, page 881. As of old, O Lord our God, you gave the commandments to make one nation just and true. So by your incarnate word, you make all peoples one in your grace and in the perfect freedom of your service. We give thanks to you through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Are you feeling good this morning?
Amen. Wow, that looks Now you go to Sunday school, yeah. Now you want to take this and who would like one big? Me do. Who hasn't had it yet? Well, you were the one I promised it to last time. I think I promised it to you. Yes. Yeah, right? Yes. And he didn't get it, so it's his turn. So you guys will get a turn next time. Now then, Amy, would you get across? Please forget, these little people need to go downstairs. Yes, yes, sir. beginning at the 38th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun shine rise, he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Gracious and eternal God, Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts will be now and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. of us, one of the easiest would seem to be that we should pray. After all, we can pray privately in the space of our own living room, our bedroom, our bathroom if necessary, or we can pray publicly like we're doing here this morning. It doesn't cost any money. No prerequisite for knowledge or study needs to be met before we can pray. It almost seems too easy. Jesus tells us in our Gospel text for today to pray for those who persecute you. Now that's a tall order, isn't it? Even at the very low level of persecution most of us experience, we aren't prone to pray for those who do the persecuting. 
What if you or I had been in the place of the hostages released from the Middle East? Would we have found it within us to pray for our captors? Jesus quietly says, pray for those who persecute you. His words are spilled out more fully in the words, of, in the words to Timothy, in 1 Timothy 2 and 1. First of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and for all who are in high positions. That's pretty clear. We are to pray for everyone, including those in power over us, and even those who persecute us. But that may not be so easy to do. For whom do you and I pray? Of course, we pray for members of our family. We pray for our friends, certainly. We pray for those who influence our lives, probably. Those who are hurting, most likely. Who else do we pray for? Many of us, I hope, including our prayers, and this is something that I've learned to, to do, to include the dozens of people who serve us daily, those whose names we may, be, may not even know, the grocery clerks. And if you get in line behind a grumpy customer, you'll know they need our prayers. <laughs> the bank tellers, the road repair crews, the people who are up long after you and I are gone to bed with all the snow, like we saw this morning, that are clearing the streets for us. The flight attendants, the doctors, the nurses, teachers, and countless others who make our lives more comfortable, manageable, and enjoyable. We pray regularly for people in other parts of the world or for groups of people in particular need or turmoil. Like I'm sure many of us are remembering the people in Egypt and the Middle East right now and all that's going on over there. Even if we don't know their names, we pray for them. We may pray regularly for those who are suffering, for the hungry, the refugees, our troops, those in the hospitals, both those close to home and around the world. We may find it a little harder to pray for those who are in competition with us, whether in career, music, or sports. It is even more difficult to pray for those who, in, who are in competition with those we love, especially our children. I have a nine-year-old grandson who comes out here in hockey tournaments. And um, he play, actually plays against Gray, uh, Bradley, who was Lynn's son. So it puts me in a bit of an awkward position. <laughs> and uh, the last time they won, he came home. My grandson did and said, Nan, I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> so he must figure that his grandmother must be praying for those whom he is praying, playing against. It's hard, isn't it? Let me ask you a question. I thought about this as I was preparing the sermon. How many of you next week are going to be, when you go to the hockey game, are going to be playing, praying for those who are playing against the caribous? <laughs> it is also hard to pray for those who have hurt us and are likely to hurt us again and again. Whether the wounds they inflict are intentional or not, it is hard to pray for such people. Yet this is precisely what we are called to do. Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And in the words of 1 Timothy chapter 2, as, I, as I've already quoted, we are called to pray for everyone even kings and all who are in high places. And we must remember that at the time that this letter was written to Timothy, 
most kings and rulers were hostile to Christians. They persecuted all the people who believed in Jesus. And yet Jesus is saying, pray for them. They were mostly cruel, brutal men who tortured and killed a lot of Christians and insulted them rather than have any respect for them. They thought that they were the ones who should be worshipped and not God. But yet, when we read scripture, we read of the early church leaders saying in effect, we will not worship you, but we will pray for you, and we will respect your authority in government. Our impulse might be to find a loophole in what we are hearing in today's gospel. We may want to say, well, what does it really mean to pray for them? If I can pray that they be turned around or thrown out of power or rendered harmless, I guess I could do that. But beyond that, I don't really know. However, the words of Jesus are love and pray. Love them, pray for them. And in the four Greek words that are used in Timothy, when they are translated into English, it is made clear that they are intended to span a broad spectrum of prayer, and thanksgiving is included. I've learned to pray when I pray for you people. This is my prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the people of St. Mary's congregation who love me, support me, and challenge me. Because it is in the challenges that I grow. Why are we asked to pray for those who persecute us? Well, it was clear then, and it is clear now, that there are still so many people in the world who were under the influence of evil. Why were the people of Jesus' day asked to pray for them when they knew that there were so many Christians, believe it or not, who were being torn apart by lions? They would take the Christians and they would throw them in the pathway of the lions, and the lions would literally tear them to pieces until they died. And yet Jesus asked the people of his day to pray for those who did that. And you and I, we hear, we keep hearing about terrorist bombings and senseless slaughter, people being murdered each and every day, innocent people. So why does God ask us to pray for people like that? Well, my friends, there are a couple of reasons. Jesus says, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. In one sense, we can infer that he means this is one of the things that we do if we want God to be pleased with us. In verse 48, Jesus says, to be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. We can infer that God prays for all of these people, and if we want to be more like God, that we need to pray for them too. God also desires that everyone be saved. That everyone be saved. And to come to a knowledge of truth. Of truth. God's desire for mercy and salvation is far wider than you and I can understand. I remember when Saddam Hussein was very popular for the wrong reasons and telling my son that I was praying for him. And his reaction was, Mom, you mean to tell me you're praying for someone like that? People like that need our prayers. People like that are not outside of God's saving grace. Remember the story in the Bible of the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son? Just think about it. By asking us to pray for even the most repugnant of the alienated, Jesus is asking us to join him 
to be a part of his incredible mercy in searching, seeking, and awaiting the way laid of the world, as we would probably call them the worst of Adam's race. You've heard that expression, haven't you? No one, no one is beyond God's concern. Suppose you and I had a wayward son or daughter. Suppose you and I had a wayward brother or sister. Would we want someone to be praying for them? Of course we would. Well, you know, Scripture tells us we're all brothers and sisters in the Lord. And therefore we pray for all of those, those that are included in the realm of grace that God offers to us all. And we must pray that God will work in their lives, that they respond to God's will, and that they be reconciled with God. We can further pray that they be reconciled to us, and we to them as children of the same Heavenly Father. And finally, we need to pray that God will work in our lives to change us in whatever way God sees fit, since you and I might be a part of the problem, too. We cannot escape the words of Jesus. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. My friends, I pray this morning that we will search our hearts today, each and every one of us, and that we will find those nearby and far away for whom you and I have the hardest time to pray. It could be someone who's hurt you deeply and you're still carrying the scars around in here. Try, if you can, to take that person on your heart and pray for him or her. And then add someone else and then someone else until you get to including more and more. And pray for ourselves that we will all be reconciled to God. And you know, when we start doing that, we don't know what the result will be. But we do know what you and I have been commanded to do. Let us pray. Loving God, we confess before you this morning that oftentimes we do fail and we do disobey your word. It is easy to pray for our families, Lord, our friends, those we love, those who are heavy on our hearts. But it is difficult and challenging to pray for people who hurt us again and again. But, oh God, I pray that you will help each and every one of us to become more like you and to include those whom you would have us include one at a time recognizing that your love and your mercy is extended to them as well as to us. This we ask in your holy and precious name. Amen.
76. Hymn number 76.
Let us pray for Fred, our primate, Claude, our metropolitan, David, our bishop, Daphne, our priest. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Most Reverend Dr. Barry Morgan, Archbishop of Wales, and the Bishop of Landau, the Right Reverend David Yeoman. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reverend Amanda Taylor, maternity leave for the parish of Bay Roberts, Collies Point. The Reverend Canon Thomas Moulton, congregations at St. Matthew Bay Roberts, St. John the Evangelist, Collies Point. We pray for the parish of Grand Bay, Rector, the Reverend Peter Boot, the Honorable Assistant, the Reverend Mary Ann Boot, congregations at St. Paul, Grand Bay, Holy Trinity, Codbury, St. John the Evangelist, Cape Ray. We pray for the Queen and all those in authority. We pray for Prime Minister Stephen Harper, Premier Kathy Dunderdale, Mayor Fred Best, and we ask that their decisions be made in your light and truth for our benefit and blessing. We pray for the world and its many needs. And especially we take to heart praying for those who persecute us and those who are our enemies. So that in showing your love to them, as scripture says, we heap coals of fire on their head. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the Winter Carnival happening in Clarenville at the present time. Help us keep mindful. The winter is a difficult time for many people because it creates a housebound, closebound situation for them. So as we look at the needs of people in the community and in our families, help us to recognize how we can bring them out of their boundedness. But also in that, share the gospel of Jesus Christ to open up their dimension and their world. We give thanks for snow and the wisdom you give to protect us as we travel in it, as we play in it, and to turn our grudging thoughts to joyful thoughts. Within this congregation, in our prayers, we ask for the needs of Reverend John, Bev, Leona, Lucy, Dorothy, Joyce, Reverend Daphne, Max, Harold, Owen, Lillian, Hezekiah, Wavy, Sarah, Reverend Jim, Hayward, Rhea, Abe, Reg, Janice, Hetty. Those we name now. Those we name in our hearts. And those known only to you. Please turn to page 129. 129 in your service book. In the middle of the page is the word accept. That's where we begin in this prayer, and I invite you to join me. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us 
us on every side. We thank you for setting up tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience, for which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Greenland. Did I get that right? 
They're going to be leading our worship and music tonight. So we give God for the gifts of our people and for their willingness to use them. Have a wonderful week in the Lord and do enjoy the snow. <laughs> Even if you do have to shovel it or snow blow it. Our closing hymn is number four. Hymn number four. Oh,